Hello, Ken Spriggs here uh, with a part two to my last video introducing my new 3D printer. Uh, I started filming some more of the scenes creating the additional parts to the Mandalorian and realized that there were a lot of things that I could have shown a little more of as well as the parts that I'm printing out for this. Uh, like I said, it's a bit of a learning curve doing this, um, starting with the 3D printing that uh, for things that I hadn't done before. Uh, it, it's really interesting because what it tends to do is, is make you rethink a lot of, of how you're doing it. Um, I'm used to building a model, painting it, putting lights in it, that kind of thing. So uh, doing this, and it, it took me maybe about five or six days to print it. And that wasn't just doing it you know, straight through. Uh, I had to, um, to, to wait a little bit of a few of them, but, um, uh, all told though, it was quite a bit of work put into getting this printed out. So it was kind of unusual because I was accomplishing something, but in a sense, I'm actually making the model that I'm then going to paint and build, which is really unusual. Like my mind had to be wrapped around that. It's really cool. I loved it. I loved creating these parts and seeing them come out and, and how awesome they look. But in the end, I had to stop and think, oh, wait a minute, I, I still have to build this, build this and paint it. So it's kind of interesting because a lot, I'm sure a lot of the same thought that I had to put into putting the supports on these and uh, which are sort of like sprues are a lot of the same considerations that model builders have to use when they're making a kit and where to put the sprue connectors. And we've all been there where you get this kit and it's like, why on earth did they put the sprue right there in the middle of that smooth part that now I have to putty and fix and patch up? So a lot of that had to, thought had to go into arranging the different parts for this kit and printing them out. Uh, and as I said, I'm learning as I go, but uh, let me go ahead and show you then uh, the creation of the remainder of these and I'll show you a little more detail in how this machine works and a little bit about the software that's used for it as well. All right, so I started on the second print and this time I decided to combine two different parts, the torso and the legs, which are some sizable parts. So that will save me some time because the, um, the layer is all printed once. The, the mechanism doesn't have to move around like a filament printer. Uh, so, as you can see, those two big areas are the flat bases for the two parts. And it's going to take 4 hours and 53 minutes. At this point, we're 4 minutes into it, and we're at level 5. I'm sorry, layer 5 of 1,250 layers. And we're sitting about 1%. So, a uh, very informative screen. I really like it a lot. It shows you the progress shows you what's happening with it. Uh, and again, one of the benefits of the resin printer is that it's not, there's not a mechanism moving around on a plate that's printing each line like it does on a filament printer. It literally just shines UV light in the areas where you want it to shine. And it can do these entire areas all at once. So it's one layer. It doesn't have to do little bits and pieces. So it's much faster. So the, um, the head, which was considerably smaller than either of these parts, took about two and a half hours. So I'm saving a considerable amount of time by doing two parts together. So, but it was my first time at it. So definitely I'll get more, um, more uh, skilled at this as I go. So we'll go ahead and let that print and check back later and see how this works out. All right, so we're sitting at about uh, 52%, about halfway through. Two hours and 20 minutes to go. 659 out of 1,250 slices. And it's, uh, you can just see how it pulled up and pulled back down again. And then it goes on to the next thing. So this is really cool. It shows the layers that it's printing right now and what they look like. And there it goes again. And you can see, it's hard to see in there with the red. I don't want to take the lid off, but um, you can see definitely something is printing on both sides. So that's going to turn out, I think, very well on my second print. Pretty cool. All right, so we will let that go and see what we get in about two and a half hours. All right, so here's a little bit of um, uh, the Cheetu box program that I'm working in. 
A lot of it does it for you pretty much automatically. Uh, this is several, let me show you a top view here. So as I was saying, uh, one of the best features of this printer is that you can print multiple things at once and it doesn't have a filament or a head that's moving around in printing layers. It literally is going to flash it one layer, two layers, three layers, and so on. So it can do all these parts. So I have six different pieces at once as long as they fit uh, on the X and Y axis and, and vertically on the Z axis, which they do. Uh, it will print them all at the same time. It saved me a lot of time instead of doing one at a time like I did in the first print. Um, so what you do is you basically import one at a time, arrange it how you want it to be. So the, uh, the two arms I hollowed out because they were fairly sizable and I put a hole in, um, in where the peg goes so we can, I can drain the resin out of it when it's done. Um, I didn't do that with the, the hands or the guns because they're so, they're so small anyway, so you can leave them solid. The shoes, uh, I might put a hole in those. I'm still playing with it. I might make those hollow as well just to save on resin and to um, make them a little bit lighter. Um, now on the other hand, if they're solid, they'll be a little more weighted at the bottom for the figure. Uh, so I'll play with it and see. Let me go back to the front view. Oh, drag that down a bit. I had to play with it a bit to get to to figure out how to use it. So as you can see, this one's highlighted, so it's a little darker blue. I can highlight this one, and it gets a little different shade. And then here's all the here's all the ones over here. So we have the arm right, arm left. We have the right hand with the rifle cut and the rifle cut. The right hand is holding the rifle behind his back over his shoulder. Uh, there's two versions. There's one piece with the rifle in the hand. And at first I did that, it would fit, but it's really long and it would take a lot longer to print. So uh, fortunately he made it in two different pieces. So you have the hand and you have the rifle in two separate pieces. Uh, or at least part of the rifle is cut off so you just put the two pieces together. So that'll be easier to do. And then I have the, um, the left shoes and the right shoe over here. Uh, so then you come up here and you have your structure options. And at first I was just going through and putting, putting them in myself. There's a, there's a manual version of it. But then I figured out how to do the auto support and you just hit platform. You tell it what percentage you want for density. I'm doing 30%. I left the other ones the same. Now I did pick, uh, okay, I did pick a medium, which has to do with the connector rather than the light. So it's, very, it's pretty thin. So it's easy to snip off when you're done. And, um, I used that on the um, on the first one. Let me show you here. There we go. So the connectors are just those tiny little points. And there's all the supports I did just for the helmet. So pretty cool. All right. And then it automatically puts them in. And then I just go and I arrange them onto the build plate. And keep in mind, what is now the bottom is really upside down. That's the build plate. So these would all be hanging down into the resin. So obviously, if you have certain parts like this arm, it's going to have to have supports holding it up while it's printing. So, all right, thank you. I'll get that in a moment. <laughs> all right, so uh, pretty straightforward. And then when you're done, you go through and you do, let me get back out of this. You tell it to slice and it goes through and it creates the slices or the different layers and it tells you how long it'll take. It'll tell you how much resin it would need and you can go with that or you can come back and adjust it and, and go from there. So, all right, it's pretty cool. It shows you how it's gonna print through this, this little line moving up and down. So this is, the bottom of the plate. These are all the little squares 
that are the first thing that it prints, like these right here. So this is the, up on top of the plate. Uh, and then what you can do is you can start it and it'll just kind of show you the animation of it filling in. And you'll see these circles are the supports and then you start seeing like a shoe up here, bottom of the shoe, part of the arm up here, some of these parts, the other shoe. So it's pretty cool. So this is how it's actually gonna print. It's if we were looking up from the bottom to the plate. And now you can even see how the shoe is taking form. And this is sped up quite a bit. It will not print this fast. This one's gonna take about five or six hours. But there you go, that's pretty cool. So you wanna take it into account when you're setting these up because I don't have to have them sitting the way they are, but I tried to pick the best approach so that it would, it would print it on the correct angles and not have too many supports over top of the, the pieces that I have to clean up. So, so there we go. So that's pretty cool. All right. And here's my second successful print. I printed his legs with one of the legs propped up in his torso. Pretty cool. So let me go ahead and uh, cut those off of there. And I now have a, a plastic container with my isopropyl alcohol. So I'll get them into there and get them rinsed off. We'll get them uh, cleaned up, get the supports taken off, and we'll take a look at that. All right, there we go. And that's how the um, hanging bracket works. You can just hang it on there and let it drip off because uh, I'm getting ready to put it back in and print one more print tonight um, in order to complete up the main parts of the figure except for his cape. So there's no sense. I wiped off the bottom, but there's no sense doing anything else with it, cleaning it off entirely. I might just put a little bit more resin in there just to be sure. Um, but here are the figures. Uh, I may want to adjust, as I had shown earlier, I had it set at 30%. But that's a lot of sprues or a lot of supports uh, it's not terrible but occasionally it'll leave a little mark or something that I'll have to clean up Let's see if I can like right there so I can either blend that in and just make it look like part of his damage or just slightly putty it a little bit but um but very nice print quality again look at that that's incredible at the damage on his little plates, little bullet holes, blast holes. It's really cool. And his chest piece. Again, you know, these are these are supposed to be actual holes in it, and they are. You can see all the little blemishes. That's gonna really look cool when I get that painted and weathered. So that's really sweet. And then these go together. Hold on, I'm trying to do this with one hand. There we go. That's pretty cool. And again, these are hollowed out just like the head is for the helmet. And that'll go right up on top. So now I have the other program set as I showed for his arms, his legs with his boots and his uh, his rifle hanging over the side. So let me go ahead and get that started and then we'll, uh, we'll finish up the main figure. All right, so I started working on putting together the um, different parts of the Mandalorian. So the... Um, the two torsos were not fitting together uh, in a solid way. They were coming up with a gap. So what I decided to do is take some epoxy sculpt, mix together a little bit, and I just made like a very thin ring of it, put it around, and then squeezed it down onto it, and then started working it. Also, that belt right there did not go all the way to the bottom, much like this one right here. Even if it was snug down inside, it would not go all the way down to his other belt, which looked kind of strange. So I, sorry, so I put some more epoxy sculpt and just kind of sculpted in the rest of the belt. All right, 
So I think that's looking pretty good. I might just smooth it out a little bit more with a little bit of water and a brush. And then I'll just let that harden. That'll just harden these two parts together without gluing them. All right. And then uh, I also began primering the helmet. Got a nice coat of, to me, is gray fine surface primer, which is one of my favorite primers. And let that dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some, uh, some of the gloss black I'll clad on it. And I'm going to put a stainless steel onto that. Because his helmet's pretty much in, in decent shape still and looks pretty shiny. So uh, that part I'll do. The rest of it, I'm not sure if I want to do a little bit of outclads on maybe these plates and then really dirty them up or even his shoulder pads, but we'll see. Probably not. I'll probably do something more like a, a gun metallic or something like that. So we'll see. All right. All right, so uh, as I showed in the stills, I got the helmet painted. And I'm not sure this is going to be my final one. Probably not. Uh, what I did was I put a coating of um, the Fine Surface Primer from Tamiya on it. And then I put the gloss black over it for the outclads. And then put on some uh, stainless steel, which is the... Um, the outclads that I used because it's a darker metal but it's not like a gun metal and then I just used some uh, flat black for the visor and once that dried I put on some to me a smoke which is a clear to give it a glossy kind of look so I kind of like the way that looks but there are some print lines visible like right there Right there, of course. Over there, those are pretty obvious ones. So, now the beauty of this, and I'm showing this, I'm not going to show the detailing and painting of this in this video. I will be doing that after this video and showing you getting it glued together and painted. But um, one of the good features of having a 3D printer is if I'm not happy with this, unlike a model kit, I don't have to go buy another kit, I just print another one. And there we go. And this one, I left the bottom on where that one I had cut most of it off. I still hollowed it out, but I, but I uh, left it intact. It looks like a cleaner mold. Now, what I can do, and one of the features of this is you can reduce the layer height down as far down as 0 0.01 millimeter. Um, the rest of this was all printed in 0 0.05 millimeter which is five hundredths of a millimeter, very tiny. That's just the, the thickness of each layer that you print. So um, I reduced it down to like 0.4. I started with 0.1 when I was printing this with the, with the um, I forget what it was. It was one of the other parts, one of the base. And, um, and it told me it would take 39 hours. So I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be doing that. Uh, because you have to imagine it's it's making the the layers five times as many. So if you had two thousand, now you got ten thousand. So um, it is a little finer. But if I wanted to, I could print just the helmet. It's fairly small. I could do it at the point zero one. It would probably still take me a good eight hours or so. So we'll see if it's worth it or not to get just the finest finest detail. But this one looks pretty good. So once I get it painted and uh, get a at least a um, uh, a coat of the surface primer then that'll kind of tell me if there's any real blemishes that I need to worry about but it looks pretty good so okay but that's a great feature if I don't like it if I damage it I'll just print another part and uh, and no problems at all all right so I had my first field print uh, this was my fourth print and I was printing the cape for the back of him and it's fairly sizable uh, you can see that this is the structure for it. So the cape should be inside of this curve, but it's not even the bases there. It all failed like right away. 
and you can see there's the problem that's a that's a solid hunk of uh, resin in the bottom center so what this did was it just uh, broke loose early on fell down in the center and hardened and then it just blocked the UV light right in the center oddly enough <laughs> because everything else around it printed obviously this printed fine which was around the edges and this had already printed on the bottom so the rest of it just didn't work um, it was supposed to be an eight hour print I didn't no, to about four hours in, I looked and I saw that I could see this, but I didn't see any substantial capes, so I went ahead and stopped it and and pulled it out. So um, I'm sure that it happens. It might be that I use too fine of the connections. Uh, there's a there's a like a small, medium, large connectors that you can that you can program in. I had it the smallest. I should probably change it to the largest for this piece at least because it's fairly substantial. Um, possibly also I did do three prints with the same resin and didn't pull any out so I should probably watch that if it's a sizable print I should probably take it out and filter it as you can see have some filters and get any pieces out because obviously if they get in the bottom and the light hits them it's going to stop and it's going to start hardening the resin down on the on the clear part and not on the build plate so that's a problem but no big deal so a little bit of lost resin looks kind of like a roller coaster it's kind of cool <laughs> i could probably use that for something <laughs> but uh let me go ahead and um get this cleaned up and we'll get it back in do a little bit of adjustments and i should probably be able to get that to print all right so i did print the larger parts of this build uh the two halves of the base and this rock part goes on to this part here uh, I did make a bit of a mistake in putting one of the vent holes where it was visible and I didn't realize at the time but no big deal I can patch that up the other ones are fine all I'll do is put some thin styrene over that or fill that in with something that's all uh, I can fill this back in with other materials like plaster or whatever to give it some weight I just didn't want to waste the resin and there was no need for it so I put those vent holes. Um, I could print it again, but there's it would just as easy to patch it. But you have those. You have the really awesomely detailed uh, skull of the horn monster. Really nice. This is really sweet. This is gonna look great once I get it painted and weathered and get some detailing done in there. Uh, you have your um, your two stormtrooper helmets on a spikes. Pretty cool as well. Little blast holes. <laughs> and then you have the cape. And the cape was the only print that failed. And mainly because this whole thing is hanging down. And this piece here is fairly substantial. So I think when I used the, um, the weaker supports, it just it wasn't able to hold it up so this would have printed this would have been down in here like this and so right in the beginning this flat part broke off of the supports fell down in and just messed up the rest of it so so uh second print was a charm though and this is really cool too look at the the ragged nature of it there's some holes in it and some of these, like the cape, of course, was easy enough to leave some of the little bumps on from the um, from the supports because it already looks that way anyway. There's a lot of that pattern built in, so uh, it had not too much cleanup at all. I want this to look really ratty and ragged, so that was pretty cool. And that's a really nice touch on this model as well, so definitely fantastic. Let's get and take a look at all of the parts for this. All right, so... Um, I had shown earlier that I had gotten a UV light when I purchased this uh, printer. This is about $30, not too bad. And it just plugs into a socket and you turn it on. Um, I did get some eye protection. This is, these are also 99 point whatever percent UV filtering. Uh, now I'm not gonna look directly into it and certainly don't ever do that. 
but just in case when you're using something like this, you want to be safe and you want to be careful. So once the prints are done, they're, they're solid, but they're still kind of rubbery, as you can see this. I mean, this is obviously very thin, so it's going to be a lot more rubbery, but they're still not completely set. So what you do is you just shine this on it for about five minutes or so, move it around, shine it on the different parts. So as comparison, this end here, I already did that for, and it's fairly rigid. It still has some flexibility because it's a very thin structure, but it's not like this where it's kind of rubbery. So that's a final step you have to do on them. It doesn't take very long, and this is really good to do it. At some point, I might rig this up in a box and put a turntable or something just to stick it in there and let it do its thing. But, um, but yeah, you could, I guess, leave it like this. I mean, this has been like this for several days. It'll be fine. It'll stay this way until I light cure it or stick it in the sun. But, um, but I don't know if maybe there'd be some, some point to keeping it this way. I thought about doing that with the cape because then I could have flexed it down where I wanted it and hardened it. So, um, so that would be a benefit of doing that and doing it at the end. So, all right, so here are all the parts printed for this kit. And um, I ended up doing uh, eight prints all together, only one of which failed, which is really good success rate. And that was really due to my picking of the, uh, the finer or the smaller uh, type of supports. And that was for the cape. The, um, the part count is 16. If you include the two halves of the rifle. The rifle does come in one piece as well, but it would have been, it would have been taller and took longer to print. Uh, it's not so much how thick it is, but it's this height it would have to do every single layer all the way to the very tip. And that would actually increase the print time probably by another couple of hours. So it was easier to do it in two parts and it came that way. So that worked out good. Uh, and um, so all in all, it, the prints came out really nice. There was a little bit of a fit issue on a few of them as far as the connectors. And I think that's really just due to the fact that I reduced this kit down by 50%. So, um, it's really designed, it's a well-made kit, uh, but just a few things I have to fix up and patch up, but nothing major, nothing that I wouldn't do on a regular kit. So, uh, so really, really good uh, model. Definitely highly recommend this, and I'll put the link in the end of the video for Carlos Martinez if you're looking to get this. And as I said, this does print out a normal size at about 12 inches. This is gonna come out to be about half that, about six inches when I build it because I had to reduce it for the size of my printer. So let me go ahead and um, kind of mock these up together and just kind of show you how the, the completed kit's going to look. All right, and here is the finished um, mock-up. He's not glued together. I just have him precariously standing there uh, with the parts put together to show the completed figure. So I think it turned out pretty excellently. It's a really cool figure for sure. I definitely highly recommend looking into um, this, uh, this figure from Carlos Martinez. Uh, and I put the link in the description if you are interested in purchasing a copy of these files to print for yourself. All right, so definitely an excellent start to my 3D printing. And uh, I will certainly be finishing this up here very shortly and uh, getting it painted and displaying that as well. So, all right, fantastic. All right, so my final thoughts um, on my brand new Mars Oligoo printer. Uh, absolutely love it. It's a fantastic uh, printer. I love the print quality that comes out of it. Uh, I haven't really had any of the issues that I have heard about on other reviews of it. Uh, including uh, prints not sticking to the build plate. People described having to scuff it up a bit with sandpaper. I've had none of those, none of my prints have failed to stick to it. Um, even my failed print, it stuck to the plate. It just did not keep the parts on the structure because of my own design of the structure. Um, I've also heard um, reports of the FEP film having the the resin print stick to it as well and making a popping sound when it pulls loose but i haven't heard any of that with this at all uh it's very quiet and um, i've had no trouble with the fep film uh, so i didn't switch out to the non-fep film that i purchased along with the printer 
I'll hang on to it in case I would need to use it in the future. Um, so no issues at all. Well, the print quality is fantastic. The prints came out really, really nice. Uh, and I highly recommend it, uh, not only for the price point, but because it's an excellent printer. It's an excellent design to it. Um, now, I did want to mention and just kind of talk briefly about um, the materials that you're using in doing the resin printing as opposed to, say, the filament printing. Um, certainly, you're using liquid resin, and it does have an odor, and it can be toxic, and you don't want to be breathing that in on a regular basis, or really at all if you can. Uh, and you don't want to get it on your skin because it could certainly irritate you. Um, so you want to use precautions. Uh, now, this is this same thing can be said with so many materials that we use in this hobby. Uh, CA glues, uh, regular other types of quick setting glues, which have very strong odors, paints that we airbrush, uh, different types of thinners, certainly other, other devices such as soldering irons. Uh, I use a wire foam cutter, which gets very hot and can burn you. So this is not a hobby, nor is this a device for children by any means. Um, children can build models, build model kits with limited, with certain supervision and limited amounts of safe materials, but none of these things that I'm describing are to be used by children at all, at all, period. Uh, in adults, you need to use precaution, you need to use the proper safety things. So by all means, you want to have an air mask. Uh, I also have a, a bigger one that I need to use sometimes, but for this resin printing, this mask that they, they gave two with it are perfectly fine in protecting you. Rubber gloves, you definitely want to wear those when, when using it. Uh, as I showed, my glasses, which protect me from the UV light. So you want to use precautions and you want to be careful. Um, now, from my own experience and from this printer, I haven't used any others. When I put that one piece acrylic uh, lid over top of it, there are no fumes coming out of that printer, not when it's sitting there, not when it's running. Uh, it does not let any fumes out into the room, and I have not noticed anything of the kind. If I take off the lid, then yes, I can smell the fumes in it. Um, but like I said, they're just like if I were to leave a bottle off of some thinner, I'm going to smell it, and it's going to eventually stink up the room. Um, I did notice early on uh, I was using paper towels to clean up like the, the resin when I poured into it off the bottle and that sort of thing. And I threw them into the trash bin near my work desk. So after maybe an hour or two, I was starting to smell those fumes in the room because this material, although it's inert, it's not going to harden unless you expose it to UV light. So it'll stay there and it will smell up your room just like anything else. But I've had that same experience if I if I sprayed something and I had some acrylic, some enamel paints on something and threw it in the trash or some enamel thinners or something, it's going to stink up my room as well. So use precautions, um, read the instructions and be careful. But as far as this printer and my own experience, um, I don't see this as any type of a disadvantage or a downside to it at all. Um, I have a nice little system in place for when I put the print, get the print started, when I put resin in it, when I pull it, when I get it cleaned up. Um, and I have very, very minimal, if any, exposure whatsoever to the resin materials that are here. Um, but uh, definitely take that into account. You want to be careful if you get one of these and just use caution and I think you'll have no trouble at all. So um, thanks again to all my subscribers. I will be continuing the Mandalorian uh, and getting him painted up. And um, I also uh, recommend go check out another YouTuber by the name of Augie Gonzalez. His website is um, uh, Interstellar Modeler. That's two words, Interstellar and Modeler. He did an interview on me about a week ago, and um, that's showing on his channel. So go check him out and uh, subscribe to his channel as well. Uh, he does a great job. He builds his own models, of course, and he does a fantastic job in doing that as well. So highly recommend it. And um, thanks again to him for the interview that he did. Go check that out. Uh, we talk about my history as a model builder and uh, my diorama builds that I do. So thanks again, and I will see everybody uh, on my next video. Thank you.